Welcome to the Awakening Podcast Network. Get ready for an inspiring audio from this cutting-edge voice. You can find more podcasts at awakeningpodcasts.com. You want to go deeper? Get equipped to overcome and walk in God's purpose for your life at Awakening House of Prayer's online campus. You'll experience an online family, preaching, teaching, and prophetic impartation for victorious living. We have over a thousand members online hungry for what God is saying and doing in the earth. Visit ahop.online today and join our family. Ahop TV empowers believers with spirit-inspired messages and strategic equipping that accelerates your spiritual growth. You can subscribe to stream weekly content from Awakening House of Prayer, conferences, and other exclusive content to stir your hunger and encourage your heart. Visit us online at ahop.tv. Well, what a delight it is to be with you once again. And this podcast, I'm beginning a series on dreams. And this one is podcast episode number 13 on your dream inheritance. Let's go quickly to some verses of the Bible from the book of Job of all places. Yes, the book of Job has some amazing revelation for us on dreams. So let's go there to Job chapter 33, verses 14 to 16, where it reads, Indeed, God speaks once or twice, and yet no one notices it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when sound sleep falls on men, when they slumber in their beds, then he opens the ears of men and he seals their instruction. I just absolutely have loved this verse for so many years. Listen to it again. Yes, God, he speaks once, but because God wants us to hear his voice more than even we want to hear it, God only doesn't only speak once. It says that he'll speak twice. But what it says is, is all too often the case, and no one notices it. So then God shows up in another way, because he's been trying to get his word, his will, and his ways known to us, but we have what would be called a deaf ear. And so then it's what I call Jehovah Sneaky shows up. And what it says is, then in a dream, in a vision of the night, when sound sleep falls upon men, when they slumber in the beds, then listen to what it says. Then he opens the ears of men and he comes in the middle of the night when you're at rest, when your soul is not fighting, when all of the hindrances are not in place. And he opens your ear, and he sneaks in, and he gives you a message, perhaps in a parable, perhaps very straightforward, often in vivid colors. Some are short and some are long. Some are direct and some we have to pray and we have to discern over a period of time. But I absolutely love this the ways of God, dreams, our, your dream inheritance. This is one of the primary ways in Scripture that the voice of God comes to us. Isn't that amazing? Well, before I get into sharing some stories and some testimonies, let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit's help in guiding this particular time of dialogue. Father, thank you in the name of Jesus to be able to approach your throne and for the Holy Spirit to illuminate the written word. And we are asking that dreams would be activated, that dreams would be made more real, and that you would put in each of us the hunger and the desire to 
hear your voice in a personal manner. And so bless this time and help us to be awakened unto the mysteries of our dream inheritance. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as you can tell, this is a subject that is absolutely close and dear to my heart. I actually wrote a whole book on this subject called Dream Language. And I want to, first of all, I want to share with you one of my own encounters that I call them, sometimes they are defining moments. And so I'm going to share one with you of mine. I call it the master's degree. By the way, I give titles to many of my dreams because the Holy Spirit gives me titles or the theme to these dreams. A key is logging or journaling your dreams. But let me move on and tell you about one of them that helped me, and it's called the master's dream. I'm actually reading part of this from my book, Dream Language. I was ministering in northern Germany, and one night I was staying in a home and I on a military base. And in, in these earlier years, that was a, I was a part of a campus ministry in a church uh, that a friend and I had pastored. And during the night, I received an amazing calling or destiny dream from the Lord in which a seer prophet named John Paul Jackson came and stood before me in the dream. He was a forerunner in ministry in the language of dreams with a long history of excellent teaching on the subject. So in this dream, his image was two or three times taller, bigger than life size. He pointed his prophetic finger at me and said, you will receive a master's degree as a communication specialist and interpreter of speech. I was absolutely stunned because that's who John Paul Jackson was for many, and that's who he was in my life. But he said to me in the dream, you will receive a master's degree as a communication specialist and interpreter of speech. Well, guess what? Out of some dreams, you wake up immediately after them. That itself is a real key to the weight or the glory or a a greater essence or authority that happens to be on that dream. So I woke up and I felt the riveting presence of God all around me, and I then was catapulted from the dream into an open vision where I saw a man bent over in a field working the field. The man in the vision straightened, straightened up looked right at me in the eye and said, you will be an answer to our prayers. Well, did I ever not have a page for that? I'm a Gaul who comes from a German ancestry, and I was the first Gaul to return to the German soil, and this dream happened in on German soil. I didn't have a clue of the meaning of the dream at the time or of the vision. Though I was a German Gaul family ancestry homeland, I was this I was, yes, the first American Gaul to return to the German soil, but I had no clue of what it meant. You will receive a master's degree as a communication special specialist and interpreter of speech. Later on, I went to some of my spiritual leaders, Mike Bickle and Michael Sullivan at the time, and I shared this with them. And I remember them going, well, you know, okay, maybe whatever, you know, and we all prayed, I prayed into it. And I actually wondered if I was supposed to drop out of full-time ministry, go back to seminary or someplace and actually get my master's degree. Because that's what the dream said. The dream said, you will receive the master's degree. But like some of you, I also misinterpreted the revelation. And if you misinterpret the revelation, you won't have the right application. So I was interpreting it all literal. And I went, oh, my goodness. But the fear of the Lord was on me because I wanted to obey whatever it was. And I sure wanted to see the fulfillment that I would receive the master's degree as a communication specialist and an interpreter of speech. 
So I was willing to drop what I was doing, go back to university somewhere or like to seminary and get a master's degree in communications or something. Well, I didn't drop out of full-time ministry, though I was willing. And I know that the Lord loved my heart of obedience to do whatever it was to fulfill the dream. But I continued on in ministry. I continued on learning from others like Prophetic Seer, Bob Jones, and Paul Kane and John Paul Jackson. I started reading many other books by other people, by Bishop Bill Hammond and Rick Joyner and so many others. And guess what? Over a period of time, it dawned on me. Now, some of you, you got the interpretation from the very beginning. I didn't, but I know it now. The master is Jesus. And could it be that over time, by being a part of God's school of the Holy Spirit, of the supernatural, of the prophetic, could it be that today, as many of these John Sanford and others pioneers have gone to be with the Lord, could it be in my generation that today I have received the master's degree? Did you know that one of the other things that recently in life, I have actually also gone through life language communications training? And that is about 30 years after I had this dream. Two times I have gone through five full days of training to be a certified communications language instructor. Oh my goodness, do you think it took 30 years for that dream to get fulfilled? Well, dreams are progressive in all of our lives. And so I'm just painting you a picture of a dream that was given in the 1980s that went through the 90s, through the turn of the new century, and then to today. Some dreams are immediate. This one took some time for me to receive what I trust. For many of you out there, a master's degree, a graduate level, understanding, graduating in the things of God, to be a master communicator and an interpreter of speech. Well, that's a great dream that was personal for me and sure has helped me. And even today, understanding why I went through the efforts to become a communications specialist. Well, I also want to give you a dream from church history. That is one of the historic, amazing, outstanding ones. Now, it's really way too long. You know, some dreams are short, and some dreams are very detailed and quite long. The one I want to read, tell you about, is from Reverend A.J. Gordon, a Baptist pastor in Boston who became one of the great pulpiteers in America in the 19th century. Reverend Gordon never paid much attention to dreams. He would have been considered someone that was more of a cessationist who had believed at the time that spiritual gifts had ceased at the closing of the canon of Scripture until he encountered the God of dreams. And until the night he had a dream that transformed his entire ministry. The account of the dream, although lengthy, it is compelling. And let me give part of it to you. By the way, if God can do it with Reverend A.J. Gordon, that Gordon Conwell Seminary in New England is named after today, if God can do it for him, God can do it for you. It was a Saturday night when, wearied from the work of preparing Sunday's sermon, I fell asleep, and the dream came. I was in the pulpit before a full congregation, just ready to begin my sermon, when a stranger entered in and passed slowly up the left aisle of the church, looking first to one side and then to the other, as though silently asking with his eyes that someone would give him a seat. 
He proceeded nearly halfway up the aisle when a gentleman stepped out and offered him a place in his pew, which he quietly accepted. Accepting the face and the features of the stranger, everything in this scene is distinctly remembered. The number of the pews, the Christian man who offered its hospitality, the exact seat which was occupied, only the countenance of the visitor could never be recalled. That his face wore a peculiarity, a serious look, and as one who had known some great sorrow is clearly impressed upon my mind. His his bearing, too, was exceedingly humble. His dress was poor and plain. And from the beginning of the end of the service, he gave the most respectful attention to the preacher. Immediately, as A.J. Gordon, as I began my sermon, my attention became riveted on this hearer. If I would avert my eyes from him for a moment, they would instinctively return to him, so that, in my dream, He held my attention rather than I held his till the discourse had ended. To myself, I said constantly, though asleep in my dream, Who can this, that stranger be? And then I mentally resolved to find out by going to him and making his acquaintance as soon as the service would be over. But after the benediction had been given, the departing congregation filed into the aisles, and before I could reach him, the visitor had left the house. The gentleman with whom he had seated remained behind, however, and approaching him with great eagerness, I asked, Can you tell me who was that stranger who sat in the pew this morning? In the most matter-of-fact course way, he replied, Why, do you not know that man? It was Jesus of Nazareth. With a sense of the keenest disappointment, I said, My dear sir, Why did you let him go without introducing me to him? I was so desirous to speak with him. And with the same nonchalant air, the gentleman replied, Oh, do not be troubled. He has been here today, and no doubt he will come again. There is a whole lot more detail that's to this dream. But S.J. A.J. Gordon pondered on this dream, and it altered the entire course of the rest of his public ministry. He no longer preached as though he was only addressing man. From that day onward, A.J. Gordon would always realize that man had been there before, and the promise was that that man, Christ Jesus, would come again. One thought, however, lingered in his mind, and in something of comfort, and more of all, he has been here today, and no doubt he will come again. And mentally repeating these words as one regretfully meditating on a vanished vision, I awoke, and it was a dream. No, it was not a dream. It was a vision of the deepest reality, a miniature of the actual ministry, verifying the statement, often repeated that sometimes we are most awake towards God when we are asleep towards the world. Folks, did you just hear that statement? It is absolutely filled with wisdom and revelation. Let me give it to you again. This is A.J. Gordon's response to that riveting dream. Sometimes we are most awake towards God when we are asleep toward the world. Reverend Gordon testified that as a result of this dream, he never again preached a sermon to please men. Rather, he preached as though his guest was the man Christ Jesus himself, and he preached to please him. Oh, my goodness. Folks, I gave you a dream that changed my life and that I know that 30, 40 years later, I am even just now stepping into the greater fulfillment of the destiny of receiving the master's degree and becoming a communication specialist an interpreter of speech. And as I gave you an example, and I could give you several from Scripture, I gave you the one from Reverend A.J. Gordon that he would never, ever again preach to please men. 
but to please the man Christ Jesus. Well, we have been sent in some questions from social media that I would try to like to uh, respond to in reference to your dream inheritance. By the way, why do I call that? I have titled this Your Dream Inheritance because, as it happened for me, as it happened for A.J. Gordon, it can happen for you because dream encounters are for everyone and dream encounters are for you. Well, the first question is, can we control the outcome of warning dreams? So someone named Adrian has sent that question into us. So thank you so very much. Can we control the outcome of warning dreams? Well, I, in my book, Dream Language, I have brought us to like 20 different most common dreams that we dream. One of the most common would be called warning dreams. Now, every warning has a condition. But even biblically, when warnings are given, the conditions that need to be met to either fulfill the dream or the prophetic promise, or the conditions that need to be met to cut off the calamity or the crisis, they're not always given to us. The dream is given And then it is left to us to go before God to ask the questions. Folks, it's the way it is in the Bible, and it's the way it is in dream language. So, can I control the outcome? I have to say yes. I have to say no. It's that we have to respond back to God with the dream and now ask him the questions, what are the conditional clauses that must be met in order to unlock the fulfillment, but also in warning or warfare dreams, what are the conditional clauses that must be revealed in order to stop the calamity, to stop or hinder or postpone? And so we need to ask those questions and then not only ask the questions, respond to those replies. So I hope that, Adrian, that that is able to help you. So can we control the outcome of warning dreams? I have to say yes, and I also have to say no. It depends upon our response. So we inquire of the Lord for the, the promises that need to be met to unlock the conditions to unlock the promise, and we also inquire of the questions, the hindrances that need to be identified to be removed so that the warning can be fulfilled. Okay, number two, Christy has said, why why would you have several dreams? The same dream over years. So another way of saying it is, what about reoccurring dreams? Well, let's go again to the book of Genesis. We know that Joseph was given repeated dreams, or he was given more than one dream in the same night. And then, but when you have reoccurring dreams, like in the same night, I know this is a related subject, and you have more than one dream in the same night, they will often be different symbols. But in reality, the essence of the message is going to actually be the same, because God confirms his word by the testimony of two and three witnesses. By the way, That phrase, God will confirm his testimony, his word, by two and three testimonies, is recorded three times in the Bible, in the book of Deuteronomy, in the Gospels, and in the Apostolic Epistles. So three times in the written word, God says, I will confirm my word by three testimonies. So what about reoccurring dreams? Listen, sometimes those are the life vision dreams. And they come now, they come later, and they come again later. Why? Because again, God wants us to hear and fulfill his word, his voice more in our lives than even we want to. So this is the mercy, the persistent love of God that speaks to us over and over 
and over and over. And reoccurring dreams are the mercy of God to help keep us on track. And yes, they can be fulfilled. This is a part of your dream inheritance. And let me just go over one more question quickly from Eunice. Can you go back into dreams for more details? Oh my goodness. Now that question, I can tell, comes from an experienced dreamer. Because this person is saying, is it possible I got it I didn't maybe fully comprehend it. Could I ask the Holy Spirit that I could revisit that dream, maybe even have it again, or more details? Absolutely yes, because all things are possible to them who believe. And remember the principle, God wants to confirm his word. So, It might be literally in another dream encounter. And you ask the Holy Spirit, you you journal it, you bring it to him, and you say, hey, Holy Spirit, I need your help. Will you give me more understanding? Give me more details. And guess what? It might not come in the same exact dream symbols, but he will speak to you again. But it might not come in a dream format. It might come to you in a vision. It might come to you through the illumination of the written word and more details of conditions, hindrances, promises, appointments, clarity will come. So Eunice and Adrian and Christy, thank you for your questions. And yes, you can go back in revelatory ways and get more details because God wants you to fulfill his dream more than even you want to. Well, this is James Gall with God Encounters Today podcast, and I want to now just pray for you that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will grow and increase upon your life. Father, thank you for our dream inheritance. And as I've studied this subject for over 40 years, and as I have read the 300 verses in the Bible on dreams over three, four different decades, I pray over these people that you give an increase of the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the revelatory, mysterious, wonderful ways of dreams, because this is a part of your Believing Inheritance in Christ Jesus. This has been a production of the Awakening Podcast Network. Jennifer LeClaire is the founder and owner of APN. Our heart is to inspire people and exalt Jesus with every broadcast. We're grateful for our advertisers and supporters that make these podcasts possible.